What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some crazy battles in the Open Ultra League running the Tau Trio with Kirim, Reshiram and Zekrom all with their signature moves since I had so much fun running the Force of Nature Trio just a few days ago and if you haven't seen that video yet I highly recommend you watch it as it features some of the craziest battles you'll ever see in the Ultra League. Unlike the Force of Nature Trio, unfortunately only Glaciate has the ability to lower the opponent's attack and that actually makes a significant difference in the viability of this team. Of course I'm not suggesting every person Pokemon should get a debuffing move as its signature move, but when it comes to these glass cannon Pokemon that you don't see an awful lot of play in any league, debuffing moves really help to level the playing field. Also, unrelated to the team, but I just hit 29k subscribers today, so thank you to everyone that's helped get me here, but the channel growth recently has been very slow, and I understand that this type of content isn't for everyone, most people are just looking to climb and want to see only the strongest and easiest teams to use, but I can see that less than 36% of my viewers are subscribed, however nearly 80% of my viewers are returning viewers, meaning a lot of you are watching and enjoying my content on a regular basis but haven't yet subscribed. If you are one of those people, just hit that subscribe button, it really helps the channel to grow and push my content out to an even wider audience. I know a lot of people have been requesting that I start streaming, so my proposal here is that if you guys can get my channel to 30k subscribers before the end of the season, I will do a special 30k sub stream, most likely bringing out the spicy roulette wheel and battling against my subscribers. So if you want to see that happen, you know exactly what to do. And with that being said, let's Let's get into the question of the day. What is the most underwhelming signature move for any Pokemon in the game right now? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so go into the first battle, we'll lead Kyurem into Talonflame. Now we've got two Pokemon that are running Dragon Breath. I'm going to swap into my Reshiram as I say swap and we bait out a Swampert. Now this isn't ideal, but both Reshiram and Zekrom are going to take super effective damage from the Mud Shots. Unfortunately, Reshiram also takes neutral damage from those Hydro Cannons. So whilst we do live that, the opponent can just safely shield up the Crunch and go for a full Mud Shot farm down. Now I'm running Steel Wing on my Kyurem here just because I want coverage up against Fairies. I'm not expecting to win, but I at least want to have a much better matchup there. And then hopefully with a debuff or two with Glaciate, maybe you can come in with the Reshiram, taking neutral damage from a fairy type Pokemon. But here the opponent's going to go straight for Hydro Cannons here. They're not even going to farm to the potential Earthquake. And now the opponent's going to swap into Trevenant. Now Zekrom has two shields here, two one up against the Trevenant. So we go for the Crunch. Crunch grabs a shield. We don't get a debuff this time around, but it doesn't matter. All I have to do now is safely double shield in this matchup. I am expecting them to just go straight Seed Bomb here. But honestly, Zekrom is a very classy Pokemon. I'm going to double shield and I should be able to come out of this matchup with a ton of loaded energy. Now the opponent can either come in with the Swamper, get farmed down, or they can come back in with their Talon Flame, and I can very easily farm to four Dragon Breaths, go for a Fusion Bolt before they can swap out. Fusion Bolt takes out the Talon Flame. I'm able to Dragon Breath farm down the Swampert and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there into the next battle and we're going to see a Dragon Tail Milotic in the lead. Are you kidding me? That is really bad for this team. Here I thought about no shielding. I would live the surf. I'd probably make it to a crunch but honestly I need to get off a lot more damage in this matchup. I'm hoping I can force the opponent to throw the energy here before I make it to the next charge move but it looks like the opponent can very comfortably Dragon Tail farm me all the way down and it's not looking too good for me. We're now going to come in with our Zekrom and the opponent swaps straight away into Chandelure, possibly expecting me to have a better answer to their Milotic, but we don't. But now we've got a great response to the Chandelure. We do barely outpace them to the Crunch. I take them out straight away. Now the opponent comes back in with the Milotic here. I'm going to stay in as long as possible, get off a few Dragon Breaths and then swap into my Kyurem now. I'm probably going to have to shield once. I'm going to shield the first one and hopefully I can get the full Steel Wing farm down. But it is resisted damage and unfortunately they do make it to another Surf. We will live this but we're going to have very little HP remaining. But they've got a Charizard in the back and I am full sending Draco Meteor here. Draco Meteor connects. It nearly takes them out and I will be able to Dragon Breath farm down the Charizard and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, and that is the reason I am running Draco Meteor on my Kirin, because a lot of opponents probably won't be expecting that full send nuke there. But into the next battle, and the reason I'm running Steel Wing is because we see a Fairy type in the lead. So we're going to go for the Glaciate. Glaciate debuffs their attack, but unfortunately we do just barely miss out on the second Glaciate. If I was running Dragon Claw, potentially could have made it there, and whilst that would hit for double resisted damage, 
Maybe could have got a shield there, but we're going to come in with the Reshiram. I let the Moonblast go through, thinking they were going to bait with a Side Shock. But unfortunately, we are very low now. They're going to come in with a Polyrath. I'm just going to go for the Fusion Flare. Honestly, they're both resisted. Pro probably could have fished for a Crunch debuff there, but it's not really going to make too much of a difference. We're now going to shield in this matchup as the opponent goes for an Icy Wind. They're going to debuff my attack, which isn't ideal. And then they swap into Lantern. Now, Zekrom completely walls Lantern, double resisting the Electric type damage and also taking resisted damage from Surf, but unfortunately with a debuff to our attack, this actually isn't looking too good for us. I have to let the Surf go through and I'm going to over farm. What I'm hoping to do is clear the debuff here, come in with my Reshiram and hopefully come out with two charge moves loaded on my Zekrom here, but I just don't think we're quite going to get the full farm down in time and no, we don't get there in time. That is really painful because otherwise I could have got off two fusion bolts up against the Polyrath and I've been able to take that game. But unfortunately, I'm not able to do so. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game and this is going to be a Pokemon that I want to showcase in the future once all of the Tapus have got the Nature's Madness charge move because that would also be a very cool theme team. I'd probably leave out Tapu Fini just because it is a very strong Pokemon already and I'd like to go for the more spicy stuff. But here we're able to shield up the Nature's Madness, go for a Glaciate. They debuff my defense, but I'm debuffing their attack, so that kind of counteracts the debuff to my defense. But once again, I'm going to double shield in this matchup here. I will be able to outpace them, so the opponent swaps into Galissapod, hoping to catch a charge move. I thought about full sending a Draco Meteor, but I'm expecting they're going to be running Aerial Ace and liquidation so we completely wall the energy here but these shadow claws are still going to chunk especially with a debuff to my defense so fusion bolt comes through takes out Kalei support they're still going to have to throw a charge move to get rid of us here as we double resist the volt switch damage and that puts them into range where we can dragon breath farm them down even with my reshiram and we come out with a little bit of energy they're now going to come in with their manda bars things are looking pretty good for us remember we do have a glacier already loaded on our curium we throw on poor on uh, sorry on poor timing there but it doesn't matter as we can now go for a Glaciate. Glaciate doesn't quite take them out there, but the opponent's going to overfarm too much, allowing me to make it to yet another Glaciate. And from this range, this will certainly take out the Mana Buzz, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there, into the next battle, we're going to see Kyurem into a Giratina. Now this is a bit unfortunate of course, with Dragon Breath this is actually not that bad of a matchup because I can go for the one shield and then go for a Glaciate, but at this point I'm thinking, you know what, let's just full send a Draco Meteor. They end up swapping into Galissapod and I'm still just going to full send it anyways. Draco Meteor does huge damage to the point where we can snipe with the Zekrom before they make it to a charge move and now they come in with a Verizion. Now this is unfortunate as unfortunately they do resist all of our charge moves but the dragon wave damage is still going to chunk in this matchup so we're going to over farm here go for a fusion bolt just before they make it to the next charge move we could of course be running either outrage or flash cannon as coverage here so the opponent does respect the damage and they're going to go for leaf blade once again so we're going to come in with the rest around they're going to have to go for a stone edge to deal any meaningful damage but no they're just going to go for another leaf blade no they actually go for sacred sword so i'm really unsure as to why they went straight leaf blade up against our uh, our zekrom sorry and that's actually not too good for us because they put us into a range where I actually don't know if they even need to throw a charge move to get rid of us at this point. So we're going to stay in with the rest around. We are energy dry on our Kirim since we full sent a Draco Meteor. I'm thinking, can I swap out at this point? No, unfortunately, I'm not even going to be able to get the Dragon Breath farm down either. I definitely should have just swapped out into my Kirim there. But now, unfortunately, the opponent will be able to fully double kick, farm me down, come up with a charge move loaded. So I definitely misplayed that game there. But Leaf Blade takes out my Reshiram. They're <laughs> flexing the Leaf Blade KO when it is double resisted. But GG's to that opponent there. Internet again, we see Shadow Charizard in the lead once again. Unfortunately, resisted Steel Wing damage there, so I swap into my Reshiram, and we're met with a Giratina. Now, we're going to go straight for the Crunch. Crunch is going to not get a debuff to their defense, unfortunately. They will be able to very easily outpace me to back-to-back -back Dragon Claws, but what I want to do is get them to the point where hopefully we can just Steel Wing farm them down, and that's exactly the range we put them into. Unfortunately, that doesn't quite take us out, so they get one extra Shadow Claw in for free. But it doesn't really matter. As we can come in with the Kyurem, I will be able to go for one, two, three, four Steel Wings and get the farm down. But they've got a Polyrath in the back, so this isn't looking great. My only win condition here is once again full sending a Draco Meteor. Draco Meteor goes unshielded. It still doesn't quite take them out. But I put them into range where we can snipe before the opponent reacts in time. And now it's just our Zekrom up against the Shadow Charizard. I'm going to shield the first move here. Otherwise, they can just possibly farm me down with wing attacks at that point. And now I will have to let this move go through. No shields remaining. 
amazing. Dragon Claw does huge damage. Can we get the farm down? And the answer is no. And this is one of the most annoying inconsistencies in the game, at least in my opinion, that no one talks about at all. But for whatever reason, when Dragon Breath will also KO at the same time as your opponent's fast move, it just doesn't go through. We could have got a simultaneous KO, but it literally just doesn't happen ever. I think this is the same for all one-turn fast moves, but obviously Dragon Breath is one of the more usable fast moves there. But it's just so frustrating because we could have very easily won that game having health on my Kurium remaining, but unfortunately it doesn't go through. So they come out with exactly the right amount of energy. Now here as well, we unfortunately simultaneously swapped and into my worst Pokemon that I can face a Tapu Fini as well. So really not looking too good for us right now. They're able to go for a Surf and then fully Water Gun farm us down. We come in with the Curum here and this is actually not going to be enough energy for a Moon Blast. So I'm actually going to let that go through. Fine with me. Going to farm two over back-to-back -back charge moves. Go for a Glaciate here. They should be very close to the next Surf. And they actually end up shielding and I win CMP as well. So that's huge for me. Glaciate will be enough damage to KO the Tapu Fini. And they've got a Cresselia in the back. Now this still isn't game over. We are going to of course shield the first charge move. Very unlikely that they do bait and they full send the Moon Blast, unfortunately debuffing my attack though, and then they make a really nice catch, catching the move onto their Ampharos. We go for a crunch, crunch honestly doesn't do that much damage anyways, but I could have possibly maximized the amount of Dragon Breaths I threw before they go for a Volt Switch, or sorry, before the Volt Switch takes us out there. What am I talking about? Before the Volt Switch registers the damage, but either way, we can now go for a crunch here, and what my only probably win condition here is if we bank a crunch and then swap into Kirim and the opponent thinks that they can fully farm us down and this is my only win condition here and we are able to make it to the Glaciate which is absolutely huge. Glaciate grabs the final shield from the opponent but we do have the crunch banked and when the charge move does finally pop up we can fire off the crunch. Crunch of course will be enough damage to take out the Cresselia and I'm able to take that game. So, forgot what I was talking about mid-game there, but I'm able to take that game. So, GG's to that opponent there. Into next battle, we see an Ampharos in the lead. Now, a bit awkward since they are going to be resisting the Steel Wing damage, but I'm going to go for a Glaciate straight away. Well, not quite straight away, throwing uh, one fast move after we get there. Then I'm going to swap into my Reshiram, and the opponent's actually running Dragon Pulse. That nearly one-shots me. Then they come in with Greninja. They get a full Water Shuriken farm down. That is really annoying for me. But we are now going to come in with the Zekrom. Hopefully, we can Dragon Breath farm them down before they make it to three charge moves, but they're already at back-to-back -back Night Sashes, so they're gonna fire the first one straight away, go for one extra Water Shuriken. At this point, I'm gonna shield the Night Sash here, and no, we are unfortunately not gonna be able to fully Dragon Breath farm them down, so I'm gonna double shield my Zekrom here. That's really annoying because Night Sash wouldn't quite take us out, but I felt like I had to, and then the opponent makes a really nice catch there. Way too predictable on my end. We go for a crunch. Ah, uh, yeah, we've messed this game up. So really well played by the opponent here. Very poor gameplay from me, especially since the opponent's Pokemon here actually all do typically pretty bad up against Dragon-type Pokemon. So yeah, really well played by the opponent here. They can go for a Shadow Ball, taking out the Kurim, and unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to Dragon Breath farm them all the way down. Even a resisted Z-Bomb from this range with the debuff takes out our Zekrom, and unfortunately, we end up losing that game. But GG's to that opponent. Into the next battle, another Ampharos in the lead. So this time we are going to swap out straight away into the Reshiram. And the opponent's going to bank some energy, swap into Feraligator. But with such a significant energy advantage, I feel like we might make it to two crunches before the opponent makes it to back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons. It will actually be very close. It depends if we can get there in two more Dragon Breaths. But the opponent actually goes for a crunch there for whatever reason. And that allows me to make it to my own crunch. Crunch will be grabbing the final shield from the opponent at this point. They're going to continue to over farm. And I don't know what they were farming to there but they end up not throwing a charge move whatsoever and honestly I don't know what I'm doing here either should go for the fusion flare as it does a lot more damage but it doesn't matter they've got a polyrath in the back now we could swap into our Zekrom, go for a fusion bolt, but you know what? Let's just send another Draco Meteor, nearly taking them out, forcing the opponent to throw their energy. And now this is game over. Icy Wind doesn't actually take us out there, so we come in with the Zekrom, we get the Dragon Breath Snipe, and the opponent is just going to concede the match there. So GG's to the opponent there, into next game we see Guzzlord in the lead, so this is a very awkward lead matchup for me, but I'm going to stay in, I'm not going to throw straight away here, and the opponent also not going to throw straight away, so both trying to throw on good timing, that does work out for me, because I can go for a Glaciate before they throw, and actually the opponent's going to fully commit to a full Dragon Tail farm down, so we got both Glaciates, but we don't, the opponent just shields anyways, and here, this is the annoying thing about Reshiram, there's just always a Polyrath in the Ultra League, I cut out quite a lot of battles where I just got completely destroyed, by Polyrath, but 
Um, in this battle, Icy Wind, not going to take us out because it is only neutral damage. And that's even worse for us because they get a huge counter farm down. And of course, Icy Wind will be super effective up against my Zekrom. So despite being an electric and dragon type Pokemon up against a water Pokemon, I have to shield here as they go for an Icy Wind. We can get the Dragon Breath farm down. I'm not sure if the opponent will throw straight away, but they do here. So I'm going to shield the first charge move. Hopefully they just throw straight away once again, and they do. So we get the swap into our Curium. And now the opponent still has a little bit of residual energy so this is still going to be very close and the opponent makes a really nice catch there catching the fusion bolt onto their skeleton urge if i went for, if i went for a crunch there uh, anticipating the catch which obviously i couldn't really an anticipate it would be a skeleton urge in the back then we might have just been able to take them out with the dragon breath damage but as a result the opponent is able to bank the dragon claw take out our zekrom and unfortunately we end up losing that game but GG's to the opponent there. I don't think even a Fusion Bolt from that range would take out the Guzzlord anyway, so doesn't really matter. But into the next battle, we see a Galarian Weezing in the lead. Gonna go straight for that Glaciate here. Glaciate is, of course, gonna debuff their attack. And now I'm going to shield the first charge move here as the opponent is gonna go for a Brutal Swing Bait, which is really unfortunate. I'm thinking, you know what? Let's swap, catch the charge move onto my Reshiram. And it's going to be a double resistant overheat, which was also debuffed. But once again, the opponent has a Guzzlord in the back, so not looking ideal. We do make it to a fusion flare. This is resisted damage, but still it's reasonably hard. So we end up grabbing a shield from the opponent. We're now going to wait out the switch lock as long as possible, come back in with our Curium, and we do make it to a Glaciate. Dragon Claw wouldn't take us out. They actually go for Crunch there, so I'm wondering if uh, maybe they're running Sludge Bomb as a secondary charge move, or if they just wanted to fish for a debuff there. But either way, we go for the Glaciate, debuff their attack. I'm unfortunately going to have to use my shield here as the opponent goes for another Crunch. So, yeah, possibly running Sludge Bomb as coverage there, but... The opponent is going to think about what to do here before they come in with their Polyrath. All we've got to do is make sure the opponent doesn't make a catch as the Galarian Weezing probably isn't going to make it to another charge move. We land the Fusion Bolt. It does huge damage. They swap. They bank a charge move, which made no sense whatsoever because now we've got enough energy to throw a second Fusion Bolt. And honestly, with about two HP remaining, it takes out the Polyrath and I'm able to take that game. So GG to the opponent there, into the next game we see Curum into Obstacoon, so of course got a swap out of this matchup, we swap into our Reshiram, the opponent just going to choose to stay in this matchup, I'm going to let the first move go through here, unfortunately Nice Sash will put us into range where they can probably just farm me down at this point, I don't think I'm going to make it to a second Fusion Flare, they do use their shield as well, can we get to another Fusion Flare in time? It doesn't look like we would, but the opponent does go for a charge move here, so that's fine with me, Night Sash will be taking me out, luckily no boost either times. We're now going to come in with the Zekrom, and once again, going to let the first move go through here. Hopefully, they don't get a boost this time around, but they do get the attack boost, and that is really unfortunate. Now, I'm going to shield this up. Could have thrown on CMP here and one CMP, but I want to bank the energy, then swap into my Curium here, and let's see what Curium can do. They're going to come in with a Skeleton, which is really unfortunate. If I was running Dragon Breath, I think this Draco Meteor would have already put them into range where it would take them out, but unfortunately, it doesn't quite take them out there. So, I'm going to let this move go through. Can't really afford to shield. We're now going to come in with the Zekrom and they can swap into Trevenant and if they didn't boost up against our Zekrom I think we'd have just about enough health here to make it to back-to-back -back crunches But unfortunately they did boost they got off more counter damage and unfortunately the Trevenant is able to Shadow Claw farm me down and take that game But GG's to the opponent there into the next game We swap with a Reshiram in the lead this time around and the opponent's actually running a Mod Shot Polyrath Which I mean it's not too ideal for our Reshiram since that does hit for super effective damage But it actually still hits for less damage than the counters so I actually don't mind that the opponent will have to throw two charge moves to get rid of us so fine with me icy wind coming through gonna take me out we're actually now gonna come in with my curum I'm thinking surely they're not we're gonna run a dynamic punch here but yes they are it nearly one shots me oh my gosh this polygraph is so annoying even when it when they're running different moves it still just completely destroys me but we can now finally go for a dragon breath farm down and we are debuffed in our attack, but they come in with a Crobat, so that's fine with me. Gonna go for a Fusion Bolt here, hopefully this does KO despite being debuffed. We're not gonna find out until now, because we can go for the Fusion Bolt. Does this KO from this range? No, it barely doesn't take them out there, that's so unfortunate. I'm gonna use my final shield, they go for a Poison Fang, and they have a Tapu Fini in the back. So I'm gonna swap out here, bank the charge move because I was debuffed, and the opponent is gonna over farm here, allow me to make it to a Glaciate, and Glaciate gonna debuff their attack, but that's not really relevant. What's relevant is it puts them into range where a Fusion Bolt will certainly take out the Tapu Fini. I'm able to Dragon Breath, farm down the Crobat, and I'm able to take that game. 
So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Origin form Palkia in the lead. So pretty cool to see. Uh, Palkia is slightly better in the Origin form, I believe, than the regular form. Uh, do, we, do we call it altered form now, or is it just the regular form? I don't know, but I'm able to shield ones. And I am able to actually farm them down there, which is quite nice. We're going to go for a fusion flare. The opponent is going to shield that up. Get quite a nice fairy wind farm down as well. And they didn't take much damage from those dragon breaths, of course, because they are a fairy. But we come in with our Kyrie. I'm definitely going to shield the first charge roof here. Don't really care if they bait. I can now go for a Glacier. They go and full send the play rough there. And I'm not really sure what to do. So once again, just going to full send a Draco Meteor. And honestly, this is probably worse if they let it go through. Because now I debuff my attack. I'm forced to swap out here. And the opponent is... He's going to do a really good job of over farming, throwing just before we make it to the fusion bolt. Play rough will be taking us out, and we can make it to a glaciate, but it doesn't matter. They've still got a shield remaining, so they can very safely shield this up, and they will be able to get off their own play rough once again. And this will certainly KO even with a debuff, taking out Akurium, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Tentacruel in the lead. So, Kurium in the lead once again. I do believe I swapped out Reshiram, and these are just like. Uh, slightly out of order battles so all the battles with Kyrim were before the battles with Reshiram in the lead but they're both going to swap into a Scrafty I think it's already I uh, can already tell it's going to be an obstacle in the back this was a popular team a few seasons ago when Tentacruel did get a buff with Scald um, this, uh, this was actually before Scald had the chance to debuff opponent's attack and this was just when it actually gained access to Scald which made it a lot better for the Ultra League but either way it's not looking too good they're also running Aster Spray on their Scrafty so not great for me we're going to come back in with the curium they do throw quite late though which is nice as we can now get off a of glacier and glacier is going to get them very low i'm just going to let this move go through here and the opponent is once again going to bait with the acid spray so we can swap but the opponent swaps at the same time recognizing that of course we would just be able to farm them down there they're going to come in with the obstacle and they go for an obstruct and that really sucks we're now going to go for a fusion flare fusion flare is going to be no shielded by the opponent but they buffed their defense so that doesn't do that much damage I don't know if I will be able to actually Dragon Breath farm them down either. So we shoot up the Night Sash. Can we get the farm down? No, they get the new mechanic and they get off a Night Sash. And either way, I don't think we could have won up against the Tentacruel. Anyways, since they had a ton of energy, we'd have needed to make a perfect catch and somehow have enough energy to throw two charge moves into the tentacle, which I don't think was going to happen, but GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see a shiny Shadow Machamp, and the opponent is going to farm up to a potential rock side. Honestly, Cross Shot probably going to KO from this range, but they full send the rock side anyways. I'm going to go for a crunch here. This is resisted damage, but it's going to debuff their attack. Oh, sorry, their defense, hopefully. And we do get that debuff, allowing me to Dragon Breath farm them down. And then they come in with a Sizzle. We're going to go for the Fusion Flare here. Of course, we are going to see it shielded, but the opponent has no shields remaining now. We're going to come in with the Zekrom. We are resisting the bullet punch damage as we are part electric. The opponent goes for an ice ash, doesn't do too much damage. We are now going to bank a fusion bolt and then swap into my curium. And now we should be pretty, pretty safe right now. They go for a frenzy plant, not really sure why, doesn't really matter. We can go for a glacier. This will be enough damage to certainly KO the Venusaur from this range. And it doesn't really matter what happens at this point. A fusion bolt should be enough damage to KO. The opponent is going to com commit to a full bullet punch farm down. But we can come in with the Zekrom winning the CMP tie up against the Scizor. And a fusion bolt will be taking out the Scizor. And I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Reshiram into a Cresselia. So this is an okay matchup, especially since my Reshiram is going to take only neutral damage from Moonblast, which it looks like they are going to send straight away. They didn't build up to a potential uh, future site, which I possibly would have shielded. But either way, we're now going to overfarm. Go for a Crunch here. Crunch is going to hit for super effective damage. Crunch grabs a shield though, and the opponent is going to overfarm, allowing me to make it to a second Crunch, which is very nice. We did throw it on poor timing, but we don't really care at this point. We do get them very low, and we have a shield advantage so i'm gonna let reshiram go down unfortunately grass not double resisted still takes us out we're gonna come in with the zekrom and i will be able to shield once and then fully dragon breath farm them all the way down so the opponent swaps out but they swap into a polyrath which is great to see it here because of course whilst we've got draco meteor on our kirim we're not going to get there in even shield scenarios so i'm now going to shield this up icy wind will be debuffing my attack but with the dragon breath damage i should still be able to ko with a fusion bolt when i get there and i'm going to throw just before they make it to icy wind number two fusion bolt takes out the polyrath and the opponent's going to come in with a shadow for alligator so they were double weak to the zekrom in the back i'm going to swap into my curum i should live an ice beam but they actually just bait with a hydro cannon and i don't even make it to a draco meteor but the opponent swaps out giving me enough energy 
to make it to a Draco Meteor. Of course, the opponent probably didn't know I was running it, but Draco Meteor, once again, one-shots a Shadow for Alligator this time, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into next game, we see Greninja in the lead. So this is not ideal for me. We are going to stay in this matchup. They're already at a Hydro Cannon. It is neutral damage. We've seen already up against Swamp Up. We do tank that. Not particularly well, but we do tank it. We're now going to go for a Fusion Flare. And if the opponent does shield this up, I'm probably just going to swap out. Can't really afford to give them extra energy. And they're going to come in with a Cresselia. But they did bank some energy on the Greninja. So we're going to go for a Crunch. Crunch is going to not get a debuff, but I'm going to shield anyways. I should be able to make it to the next Crunch just before they make it to a potential Moonblast to take us out. So, gonna throw it straight away once again, and Crunch from this range should be enough damage to take out Cresselia, so the opponent uses their shield. I'm gonna shield up the Moonblast as well, and then I'm hoping the Switch Squad comes up in time for me to swap and potentially catch a move, and we don't actually catch the move here, but we do force the opponent to throw anyways. They go for Grass Dot, once again taking us out despite being double resisted. I'm gonna come back in with my Zekrom here. The opponent swaps into their Greninja, but we can go straight for a Fusion Bolt before they get off any energy, taking out Greninja, but they've got a Dragon Breath Giratina in the back, possibly one of the worst things we could see as they get a full Dragon Breath farm down before we make it to a Crunch, and Krim, unfortunately, Oh, we're actually going to go for an Ancient Power here, which is slightly better for me since it does cost more energy. But Glaciate, unfortunately, is not going to be enough damage to KO from this range, and they make it to another charge move. So that is really, really bad for me. Dragon Claw takes out Mercurium, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's to the opponent there, and into the final battle of this video, we lead into a Shadow Glide score. The opponent's going to swap out there into a Polyrath. I'm just going to overfarm here, and I tried to go for a Fusion Flare, but I don't know really what happened there, but I wasn't able to click on it. We will live an Icy Wind. I'm hoping that I can possibly grab a Shield here. What I didn't want to do is swap into my Zekrom and then get Switch Locked, but the opponent does just tank that, so I probably should have just swapped into my Zekrom anyways. So not the best gameplay from me so far, but I'm going to Shield this up. I will now be able to go for a full Dragon Breath farm down, and whilst, yes, my charges are any neutral damage up against this guy's score, they're not even going to farm to an Earthquake. So I'll let this go through. Night Sash doesn't do much damage. And now they swap into a Tapu Fini, and this actually isn't so bad for us. I am running Steel Wing. I'm going to go for a Glacier. Of course, Glacier is resisted damage, doesn't do much damage, but I make it to a second Glacier on the CMP tie with a potential Moonblast, which is huge for me. The opponent, once again, going to no shield. I'm going to use my final shield here. Moonblast, even double debuffed. He's going to do a lot of damage, but now I'm hoping to go for a full Steel Wing farm down, but the opponent doesn't even commit to a Moonblast here. That's absolutely massive for me, as now I can go for that full Steel Wing farm down, come out with two Glaciates loaded. The first one will be grabbing the first shield from the opponent. The second one, of course, would take them out, so they're going to double shield here. And then all I'm going to do is not throw a charge move or swap out or do anything else, just force the opponent to throw the energy straight away. Night Sash actually doesn't take us out after a double debuff. We can go straight for a crunch here crunch will deal decent damage there we are double resisting sorry resisting the wing attacks which are double debuffed and i'm able to dragon breath farm them down and take that game so that's gonna be it for today's video if you did enjoy it please make sure you leave a like leave a comment letting me know and as well don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already and if you want to see more content like this in the future make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications that way you'll be notified whenever i upload a new video and if you want to take your support even further you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shout outs at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member, your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.